In this video, I want to show you a great application of what we learned so far. And it's uh, an application that um, is used to track bags during the execution of a software project. Okay, if you're not familiar with this kind of topic, software project management, you don't have to worry about this. You have only to uh, focus on what is your purpose, just to understand the visual basis for application functionalities. So basically, <clears throat> what I'm talking about is an uh, Excel sheet with some columns where uh, the project manager or um, the person in charge will track uh, inform the information regarding bugs or um, or uh, requirements for software. Okay, so we will have an ID, a number identif that identifies a bug. Then we will have a topic. Basically, I have four kind of topics in a project is the planning, the feasibility, the planning, uh, the execution and the maintenance phases. Basically, we're talking more than rather than topic, topic, I'm talking about phases. Okay. And then I have here on the third column, I have the description of, uh, uh of the task or at the back that we have to take care of. Then I have information regarding the status of this topic of this bug basically and uh, and the owner so the person in charge to solve this issue or in charge to uh, to implement the requirement uh, this information are usually always uh, fresh information that will be updated uh, daily or weekly etc and let's say that we have a, um, a point um, a person is gonna report the information that will collect information from various sources and input in the same Excel file and then prepare uh, the last report for the management. Okay. So there are also other information we are not taking care right now. Uh, note about them. Okay. And I want to show you only what I'm going to do. So basically I'm going to retrieve information about the status and the owner and the last update of each bug ID for a specific topic. Okay. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to select to show you first one, another file. And this is the file where I'm going to retrieve the data. Let's say that I have a file that has no header. I receive really a file without a header. And I have this information in this format. So in the first column, I have the numbers and these numbers are the bug IDs. And this second column in the column B, I have the status and the owner of the bug. So you can see here, I don't have two columns. I have only one column and the two strings are merged together and are formatted in this way. So I have status, space, brackets and brackets have the name of the person in charge and then on this last column I have the dates okay I'm gonna close this file this is very important because here basically I want to get this data from this uh, worksheet that is in another workbook and I want this information to be reported here in my uh, in my uh, report okay there is a consolidation of all the reports okay let's say that I have here uh, you can see here I have the status of um, of each um, of each um, uh, bug and then I can say uh, here I want to have a feedback I will show you also why how and why I changed the color I say this is a waiting customer and here I have a, a, a waiting release and this one is confirmed and then on hold okay and etc okay so um but the the macro that i created okay is a macro that will open will ask for which phase we're gonna we're gonna retrieve the data for which topic okay as i say we have four topics and let's say that we have four different areas we're going to receive this this information so I will um, try to find and to open a workbook where 
there is our worksheet containing the information we're looking for. So what I'm gonna do, okay, I'm gonna developer macros, and then I have the exact macro that I created before. And if you run this macro, okay, I have a form, and in this form I have project phase, let's say, or topic, and then I have my feasibility, planning, execution, and maintenance topic. Okay, let's say I'm gonna use the feasibility, and I'm gonna click on select file, and I have here the file dialog appearing to me okay that I'm going to get the file that I'm looking for okay I'm going to to find uh, this uh, this example okay um, I'm going here have my X example of import then I click here over and you can see this file will be opened and something will happen okay it's almost finished just now it said to me that I do did some changes if I want to save them and then I say don't save them you will see here we have some blue uh, blue um, fonts that means that I did something on Sunday's table that means that in the tables previously uh, in our um, consolidated report we have some bag like these that are present also in the new file and as you can see if I have blue that means that uh, this blue are IDs already existing if some of them was missing then this bug ID okay was reported in another color then now I say I don't save it okay then I will have the message done okay so what happened is have my my box my list that is changed now have some of these bugs are reported in bold for the feasibility phase okay and the chain the status is changed according to what i saw before and also the owner okay i have also some other bugs in the same topic feasibility that are red that means that i didn't find them in the report that i sent before so that can be a warning so i have to retrieve all this information have to know which bug ID were present in the previous report, which one are not present, okay, and which one are present and not present in the new report that with um, with the reference to this report, okay, okay. If you don't you don't get the the, the 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 process that I'm talking about, you are not to worry. The important is that you see that uh, you just retrieve information from work work sheet and another workbook and then you format the uh, the original uh, one the consolidated report uh, so that you know that you have some information to take into consideration after this report if i'm going to see uh, in the visual basic in the editor and i'm going to see my form i see the view code uh, basically here i have the get open file name function and i get a and then I'm gonna take a file, I'm gonna read this file and do some operation and uh, in this workbook, okay? So this workbook is the workbook one, is that this workbook, and I'm gonna take the worksheet with a name box, okay? Then I will open another workbook, okay? I will take the first worksheet and I will compare these two worksheets, okay? So I will calculate here the start row, I say that I'm gonna start and column three, if you see here, this uh, starts from column three, okay. And I'm going to the uh, to the last rows that you know how now to get this last row with the property and and row, okay. Then I'm gonna check if I have um, in my worksheet in the original one, if the worksheet is equal to sub project. That is something that I retrieve when when I click on on the combo box. Okay, it say sub project is the combo box value. Okay, so if this is equal to this, then I'm gonna check the data inside this worksheet. Okay, then I'm gonna see this check new data. I'm going to the module with the check new data. Okay, and then I see that I have a loop here from row equal to one to n rows that means the rows 
the last row or, uh, that has data in the, in the import worksheet. I'm going to retrieve this information and I will, I will change the format of, of, uh, of my data. Like, for example, if I say that I have, um, um, the bag, you see here, if the bag value and the two reports is the same, then I'm going to take this, the first cell, and I will set it in bold and give you a black color to this. Okay. So then I'm going to take the other, the other column. If you remember, I'm going to take, to take the previous one and I have here and this second column. Okay. I have the status and the owner. So what I'm going to take is I'm going to retrieve the, inf the, with the functions, with the string functions. Okay. Um, the two substrings inside this cell, the first one will be the status. The second one will be the owner. Okay. So basically the status is the one outside the brackets and inside the brackets I have the owner. So I just need to identify where the brackets are. Okay. And then separate the two strings and then trim the brackets. Okay. And then with these uh, two substrings, the low case, because I am, and then my report have the, um, the strings in a lower case and on, okay. Even if there isn't some upper cases you need uh, in this report, just for sake of, uh, uh, of consistency. We just say we use always lower case to be sure that we are going to retrieve the same, the same thing always. Okay. And then, of course, I'm gonna to I'm gonna report also the date, the date. So the date can also change, and will be reported here. Okay. So this is a, um, basically our example. Uh, you can also review this uh, uh, the code that's available. Okay, and then you can retrieve all what you need. Uh, always inside this example, I want to show you another thing that is here. We have the status. And if I click over the status, as I showed you before, okay, I just managed this only when I'm on, on this page. Okay, I can say I click over one of the status. Okay, result. As this is assigned okay the color will change so what happened here for example in this cell in the column status all the cells okay if I click on data and then I say here data validation data validation okay I will see that I selected for this cell not usually by default is any value if I see here for example I click over here data validation is any value Okay, here I have the data validation. It's a list. Okay, and I say in a cell drop down. Okay, and the value, the source here, for example, are four names that are the names of the people working in the project. Okay, same is for the status data validation, and the status is here. You can see all these values. So how it is possible that I, if I change here the status, basically I'm going to change the color. So I created here another worksheet by the name of legend. And here I have some ranges where I give some colors and here some descriptions. And what I have the color here, I gave also uh, the range name. Yeah, it's possible this if you select one cell and you see this box here. You type a name, whatever you want, it will be stored and then I can refer to this range and the worksheet. So here I see I have range underscore waiting. Okay. And if I'm going to click on a waiting customer, I will get this color. The same is for resolve. If I have this, this green color, I'm going to resolve. Okay. I will get this color basically. What I did is this. I created a, a routine. Okay, set background color. Okay, um, that is um, this call. This basically set background color 
and I pass a range, okay, is the cell that I'm, I, I want to give the color to. I'm gonna retrieve the status as a string, like resolve, close, etc. And I will give the column of, I call color status is the column of the cell that I'm gonna select to compare this. Of course, that is the, the column, exact column, where's the status this is. Then I, what I'm doing is I give a solid pattern and then as an interior color to this range, I will give a value that is given from a function set color status where I have basically I pass here. Okay. And the, and the range, basically the range I'm going to select will be these, this portion from column A to column a to column a, n okay this is my range okay i will have the status resolve or whatever and here i know that the column will be six for example so I, what i'm gonna do is gonna take a cell in this range okay so i get the row of this range then i get a, this column where the status is and then i'm gonna pass this value to this set color status Says set status color, sorry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna look for this function, the set color status, where I pass the status as a string, and I have a select case here, and I say, if the case of this status text is a wedding customer, then the set status color has the worksheet legend dot range then the name of the range dot interior color and the same is for the other one so if i found is the status string is this string then i'm gonna take the color of this range awaiting rng underscore awaiting okay so you now see this i'm gonna apply this in the worksheet box so when I'm gonna, when I'm going to change, okay, the value inside the cell or the target, okay, when I'm gonna change the value in this worksheet, I would say if this target is a range, if the range has, is only one row, okay, so it means it's not a multi range, but it's only a range in one row. And also that I have a column that is also a column that should be the column status otherwise i will exit the, board, the, uh, the sub then if all this is satisfied then i'm gonna take my range from the first column in the row that where the target is until the max column that is 14 from a to n so column n is 14 and i'm gonna set the background as i said before and also the border set border it's another function that I created before where I have the border pattern solid and pattern color index is aromatic. Okay, so in this only this example, we saw how many things you can do. You can create your application with Visual Basic for applications and do a lot of things, reporting even tools. As you see here, I can create my tool to create reports even if I don't have any template or whatever, I can create mine. Okay?